Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Labor Day, Monday, the sixth day of September, year of our Lord's 2021. I do pray this finds you well. Beautiful day here in northern Illinois. I hope you're able to enjoy some time with friends and family. And uh, again, we're doing our prayer at the close of the day. This begins on page 298 in Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And again, we turn to the daily lectionary, and this is the reading assigned for this day, the sixth day of September. And we continue with Ephesians. This is chapter 5, verses 15 through 33, so the second half of the chapter. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband, and that is the word of the Lord. Let me say that again. That is the word of the Lord. This is one of those texts that is uncomfortable to us, and I will read this at weddings, and I will hear an audible gasp from a number of the women gathered there. Usually that are women, they're women that are not associated with our church and do not understand what what. what the apostle saying and the words that he uses. You know, we just hear submit and we shut down. You know, uh, and, and remember Paul talks about all of us submitting to each other and he addresses not just wives but husbands as well. But instead of unpacking that, as I could take a lot of time doing that, I want to go back to what Paul says at the beginning of, of this section. He says, look carefully then how you walk, not as, not as unwise but wise. Well, what is wisdom? Where do you get wisdom? Where do you find it? Is it, is it just because you're old? You know, do, are, are old people wise? Well, well old people, um, one of those people, I suppose, um, old people have life experience that they can draw from, but that doesn't necessarily make them wise. And I know, and you know, I know a number of old people that are not wise. They make foolish choices. They're selfish. They, they, you know, they curse like a sailor. Um, uh, and I know. Uh, uh, they uh, live for themselves, uh, greedy, you know, they're, they're, they're not wise. They might be good with money, they might be good at uh, uh, amassing wealth, um, uh, or good at uh, you know, running a business or something like that. I know, I know plenty of God-fearing business people as well. I mean, they're wonderful. So that's not everybody. But it is interesting that we, we equate certain things with wisdom, and we, we don't really understand what wisdom is. It is not necessarily life experience. Again, that that helps, or might help, especially if uh, uh, there's something we can share to maybe uh, help other people learn from. But, you know, um, and maybe there's another side to that coin. You know, why do our youth, and it's an interesting thing about our culture, because our culture, and if you're ever interested in researching this, I can give you plenty. 
uh, good, solid sociological, anthropo anthropological research. But notice children. I was the same way. Uh, this has been around since uh, the Great Depression, really. But um, children, where do they seek wisdom? Not from us. Not from the adults. They seek it from their peers who have no more life experience and are, are probably not any more wise than the children from the Internet. Um, and man, that is doing a number, particularly on girls. Uh, oh my gosh, it's something that we can pray about. And really, if you're a parent with young girls in the house, teenage girls' house, you, got, you really have to watch that. And I mean judiciously, uh, the influence that it yields. So anyway, our children seek wisdom anywhere but where they should. Now, godly wisdom is his word. It is understanding what God would have us do, how we would have us live, see the blessings in those things. So when we come to the word submit later on, we don't go, oh. you know, the world want, doesn't wants to rob us of that wisdom. We, we go, no, we, nobody submits to anybody anymore. Certainly wives don't submit to their husbands. And by the way, submit means to place yourself under the authority of something else. It doesn't mean slavery or any such thing. And remember that Christ is supposed to be, or the husband is supposed to be Christ to his wife. Give everything to her. He places himself under the authority of Christ and does everything for his bride, everything. He gives himself to her. Now, the world will look at that and say, you know, call us all kinds of names and say we're goofy. But for those of you who are in a relationship like that, and, you know, granted, it's always, there's always sin involved, but you see the blessings. You see the good things that flow from that. When we, when we place ourselves under the authority, when we submit to God's word, that's wisdom. It's hearing God's word, uh, letting our hearts hear that word, and then aligning our lives to that word. And then so when we come to these passages that are, that are you know, that frankly make us uncomfortable because the culture is teaching us something different, we, we make sense of them. And we see how wise they are. We know, you know, and, and there's trust in the Lord there. And, you know, so when we teach our children, hopefully, you know, to look to their adults for wisdom, it's not just because they have more life experience and they know how to blow their money in Vegas or whatever, but that their parents and grandparents are God-fearing people that can direct them to the Word of God and say say things, you know, like, hey, you know, we don't understand why God would have us do certain things that maybe fly in the face of culture, you know, but we know that they're good. And maybe, can you know, that's what they can draw on their own life experience, where they have strayed from the Word of God and it's been a disaster and things like that. So anyway, this idea of, you know, examining how we walk, how we live as Christ, and then looking to God for wisdom, um, and listen to what he says and submitting to that. Now, today, you know, he talked about husbands and wives. Tomorrow, we're going to hear about children. Uh, he doesn't leave anybody out. He doesn't say you or just you. He, he includes all of us in this and blesses all of us in this. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we give thanks for gainful employment this day and take a rest from our labors, as we should, as you give to us, we do uh, ask you to bless our communities with with good work for people who seek work and need work, that uh, they may find uh, uh, meaningful vocations and be able to support their families. For those who are in dead-end jobs, to, to realize that indeed uh, they are still your servants in that place and that uh, they are to be Christ in those places. For those who, who desperately need work, that you again would provide for them. 
Heavenly Father, be with those who are traveling this weekend. Bless their steps that they may return uh, quickly to their homes and, and those whom they love. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who are crying out to you, those because of illness maybe have not been able to rest or, or be with their families or separated and hospitalized. Uh, those who uh, we bring before you now and those known only to you. So this night we pray for Jason, for Megan, for Len, for Jack, for Willie, for Tony, for Dennis, and again for all who are crying out to you. And our brother in Christ, Jacob. Heavenly Father, we ask you, according to your gracious will, place your hand upon them. Be with their families as they care for them, and in all things keep them mindful of your son's victory even over death itself. We ask you to continue to be with those who recover from the effects of this storm, uh, relief workers, those who continue to still be stranded with perhaps without power and other basic necessities that uh, these relief agencies, including the one that our church body uh, uh, has organized, that uh, they would be your hands and your feet and caring for the needs of your people. Heavenly Father, as always, uh, over the last uh, week or two, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan as uh, this uh, incredible incredibly hostile regime to the faith has uh, taken power. We know that even if people are martyred, uh, they are with you. You will be with them and strengthen them till the very end. But we ask you to be with our brothers and sisters. Again, strengthen them by your spirit that they, remain, they may remain faithful and turn the hearts of those who uh, 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 hate your, your people and your church that they may receive the forgiveness of Christ our Lord and stand alongside us and confess your holy name. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing just one stanza of hymn number 543, What Wondrous Love Is This? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul? To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. Again, that is stanza one. There are four altogether of hymn number 543. What wondrous love is this? With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed night. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.